Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about backgrounds. And that's because the backgrounds are a lot more important in the 2024 Player's Handbook than they were in the 2014. For a number of reasons that we've covered in a previous uh, video. Um, and so today we're going to go ahead and we're going to rank them. And now keep in mind, this is 100% my opinion, based off of the ability score improvements they potentially offer, the feat that they offer, and the skill proficiencies that they offer. And this is just going to be kind of based off of the stereotypical uh, campaign from what I've run in my past and from what I've seen run and based off of uh, campaign modules that Wizards of the Coast is, and third parties have come out with. So we're going to go in alphabetical order because that's what the player handbook does. So starting with Acolyte. So the Acolyte gives you a choice between intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Uh, which is cool. It, the intelligence seems to be the only one that really... Well, intelligence and wisdom both seem to make sense for Acolyte, Charisma. Hey, they needed a third stat, fine, whatever. The feat it gives is the Magic Initiate for Clerics. That makes sense. I get that. Cool. Um, and then the... The... Skill proficiencies. Sorry. Uh, it offers our insight and religion. And now this is a great combination of things because both of these skill proficiencies tie in with the potentially offered uh, ability score improvements. So all in all, it works well together. There's nothing that's really like against it. The, everything, both of these skill proficiencies you'll use in your standard campaign. Um... Magic initiate, yeah. Magic initiate cleric is cool for if you're not a cleric because it gives you access to two cleric cantrips, or even if you are a cleric, you get access to well two more of your own cantrips, and you can never say no to more free magic, right? Um, and for that reason, I'm giving it an A rank. I'm not doing S. None of these are S rank backgrounds, in my personal opinion. Uh, none of these are complete failures, um, but this is one of the better ones overall. Next one is going to be the Artisan. Uh, it, it gets the Strength, Dexterity, and Intelligence ability scores to choose from, with the Crafter as the chosen, or as the feat that it gives. Now, Crafter is a, a neat feat. It it does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It, it helps you craft things. It also gives you a 20% discount on non-magical items, and it gives you the fast crafting uh, ability, which after a long rest, you can have made a piece of equipment. It doesn't really specify, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's implied that it's non-magical, um, but it doesn't specify that it has to be non-magical in the player's handbook, so that's going to be up to your DM. And while that's, while that's cool... It's not really something that you're going to be able to utilize too well as a level one adventure because even crafting basic equipment, you have to spend money to do it. So it's not a great feat for level one. And then when you look at the, the skill proficiencies it offers, which is investigation and persuasion, investigation, yeah, that works. That works with, with the ability scores it offers, but persuasion really doesn't. That's a charisma-based check, and you're not getting any boost to your charisma. So for Artisan, for me, it gets a C. It's okay. It's niche. It'll see use, and it's not awful, right? <clears throat> Next is the Charlatan. Now, the Charlatan makes a lot of sense for what you get. You get Dexterity, Constitution, and Charisma. Those are three fantastic stats with the exception of Constitution, Dexterity and Charisma will have the majority of any skill proficiencies, any skill checks that you would need um, for somebody that you would think of as a charlatan, like a bard or a rogue, right? <clears throat> and then it also gets the skilled feat. The skilled feat's really cool, especially at level one, because it, it gives you a choice of... You get three proficiencies. You get to mix and match between skill or tool proficiencies, but you get three proficiencies. Uh, <clears throat> and at level one, three more proficiencies is not something to sneeze at. And on top of that, this is the only origin 
uh, feat that you can pick later on as well. It, it's a repeatable feat, so you can continuously get it later on down the road. But because of that, it, it also makes it feel a little less special, obviously. But at level one, the skilled feat is fantastic. Uh, the skill proficiencies you're going to get are going to be deception and sleight of hand. Once again, it, most of the charlatans you're going to see are going to be rogues or bards. So taking this background for that gives you a better choice in your, your skill proficiencies when you're making the character because you don't have to take these. You're going to get them from your charlatan background. And they both go well with the choices because deception is going to be a charisma check, sleight of hand is a dexterity check. So you can boost those when making your character and boom, you're good to go. For that reason, Charlatan also gets an A. <clears throat> now, the criminal feat is weird, right? It's not bad at all. It's, in fact, I, I'll say it's good. You get the dexterity, constitution, and intelligence ability scores to choose from. What is really weird, in my opinion, is you get the alert feat. Now, don't get me wrong, the alert feat is fantastic, especially at level one. It gives you initiative proficiency. You can't be um, surprised. And um, it, it lets you switch initiatives with an ally that's willing to switch initiatives with you. Um, that's kind of a little broken. Uh, I can see a lot of DMs going, no, we're going to just go ahead and cut that out. Fine, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> the skill proficiencies they get are sleight of hand and stealth. Two dex-based skill proficiencies. I mean, yeah, they make sense for a criminal, but where's the, uh, where's the variation? Where's the variables, right? It's good. It makes sense. But it's, it's something that's going to get abused. So as, as a player, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A. As a DM, I'm going to give it a B. And that's because it's, that alert feat doesn't really make sense to go with a criminal, in my opinion. right? And then they just kind of copped out by giving two dexterity-based skill proficiencies, which they haven't done before that and they don't really do it for the rest of them either so it's just it, it seems like a cop out to me and i'm not a huge fan of it at all but it definitely will see a lot of use and it is definitely a good uh background to take next one's going to be the entertainer the entertainer gets strength dexterity and charisma i'm not I'm not entirely sure why it gets strength i i guess i kind of do understand it I don't know. I feel like they just put it in there for, for the skill proficiency, but we'll get to that. Uh, <clears throat> the feat that they get, obviously, is going to be music musician because they're an entertainer. Musician is a really cool feat, but I don't see it being used. Even if people take the entertainer background, I don't see the musician feat being used all too often. Um, basically, what it does is after a long rest, you can play uh, some music and... How, whatever your proficiency bonus is, which at level one is going to be plus two, you can pick that many allies and give them uh, heroic inspiration. That's cool, but it's forgettable. Um, and if you dislike metagaming at your table like I do, you're not going to remind your entertainer, who, you know, whatever class they happen to be, that they can do that. The other players aren't going to remember because it's not their character sheet. They've got enough going on on their character sheet. They're not going to remember other people's player character sheets. So it's not going to get used very often, right? It's cool, and I hope it sees a lot of use. But unfortunately, I don't think it's going to. And then the skill proficiencies are going to be acrobatics and performance. Now, acrobatics is the one that I think is the only reason why you have strength as a choice uh, for your ability scores. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see acrobatics get used a whole lot in my campaigns. <clears throat> Maybe it's my players, but I don't see acrobatics checks being thrown around a lot. Even in the actual play podcasts that I listen to, acrobatics isn't a skill check that you see every day. It's kind of, I don't know, it's one of those weird checks that nobody really cares about. And, and a lot of DMs have trouble deciding 
what's an acrobatic check and what's an athletics check because they kind of encompass the same things for the most part. So it's, it's kind of a waste there. Uh, and then performance, which performance is great. Not enough people use the performance skill checks. Um, and I, I guess I get it, but I really love it when my players use the performance skill check. However, it doesn't quite hit the mark overall. The, the feet is, the feet make sense for the background, but the, it overall is going to get forgotten. It's bland. And then the skill proficiencies are two skills that don't see a whole lot of use. The entertainer, even though it all meshes well together, in my opinion, it's going to get a D rank because I don't see it getting use, right? Between the feet and the, the skill proficiencies, it's not going to see a lot of use. Um, next is going to be the farmer. The farmer background, at first glance, I was really hyped about it. I liked it a lot. Your ability score choices are strength, constitution, and wisdom. For the most part, they all make sense. The feat is tough. I love the, t the tough feat. It makes it so that if you were a squishy little wizard, you can give yourself less squishiness. Um, for those of you who don't know, the tough feat makes it so that every level you have, you get an additional two health. So at level one, you already have an additional two health. Then when you level up again, that's another two health, not counting whatever you roll to increase your max health, right? So no matter what, you're, every level you're adding an additional two to your max health on top of whatever you roll for your, your health in, in increase, right? And that's great. And it makes sense for a farmer to be tough. However, they, here's where we miss the mark a little bit. Both the skill proficiencies make sense. They're animal handling and nature. I see animal handling get used all the time. All the time. Great. Um, nature, I don't see used a lot. I wish I saw it more. And sometimes I kind of try and work out in my head a reason why a certain check should be a nature check, even though it would inherently not be a nature check. But nature doesn't get used very often. And these two don't really... They're not both for the, the ability scores that you can improve with this. I wanted to put this so much higher to give this such a better ranking. But for those reasons, I, I have to give it a C. <clears throat> Next is going to be the guard. The guard gets the strength, intelligence, and wisdom as its ability score choices. And then we're going back a couple here. It's going to get the alert feat. Once again, alert is a fantastic feat. It makes a lot more sense for a guard to have it than a criminal, but that's not the point. The alert feat is always going to raise a rank for one of these backgrounds because having alert at level one makes even level one encounters so much easier. That makes them fly by so much faster. If three out of five members of your party have the alert feat at level one, you can make your combat's a little bit tougher because you know that at least three of them are going to be near the top, if not at the top of the initiative order. And then the skill proficiencies they get is athletics and perception. Both of those work with the ability scores that you can choose from. So, I mean, I don't see athletics get used a whole bunch, but it does get used, especially when escaping like a cave-in or a burning building, you know, crap like that. When the wizard throws a fireball, the mansion's on fire, you got to get out. Athletics check, right? So it does get used, but perception gets used all the time. I would say that perception is the most used skill in all of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, and I'll stand by that all day, every day. And for that reason, the guard background gets an A rank. Now it's the guide. <sighs> the guide's a weird one. It's good, but it's a weird one. It's, um, so it gets dexterity, constitution, and wisdom. <sighs> I'm not 100% sure how constitution mixes in there, but it's there. It's there, right? <clears throat> their feats magic initiate druid. Of the magic initiate feats, the druid is kind of the least choosed one because their cantrips are kind of blasé. Um, they're not. I imagine there's, there's, I haven't gone through all of the spells in the player's handbook, so I imagine there's more. It's less blase now. It's got probably got a lot more choices. 
So it's probably a... I mean, it's never a bad choice to get free spells. But it's probably a better choice than it used to be. Um, but it's still... I don't know. It makes sense. I don't have a problem with it. It's just weird. And then it's choices... It's choices. It's skill proficiencies are going to be stealth and survival. I don't... Survival makes sense. You're guiding people through usually harsh environments. Stealth, I, I don't know, I guess makes sense. I just feel like they could have done something that lore-wise would work better with a guide than stealth. But, you know, we'll take it. Especially since both of them work well with the uh, possible choices for your ability score improvements for picking this. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know? This one was a tough one for me to pin down. But overall, it's going to get a B for me. But it is heavily bordering A. Next is going to be the Hermit. I used to love taking the Hermit background. Um, just because from a lore standpoint, it's wonderful. It's fun, right? I don't know if I'll ever take it again. Not because it's bad, just because I don't approve of some of the things it does, right? So your your choices for ability score improvements are constitution, intelligence, and charisma, right? And then it's got the healer feat. I, I feel like they're trying to shoehorn all hermits into the into the, the Disney version of a hermit where it's this old, decrepit person you know, this old decrepit, like, little alchemist that's sitting there just making healing potions all, all day, every day. And that's not what a hermit has to be. Like, you don't you don't need to box up a hermit. They can be so many things. For them to, to just box them into a healer position, it's just, to me, it's wrong. I don't like it from a lore standpoint. The healer feat's not bad. It's not as good as some of the other feats that hermit could have had. But it's not bad. I don't have a problem with it overall. But then they doubled down on it with the skill proficiencies being medicine and religion. And before you say, well, that's what they were before, shut up. I know. I know. That doesn't make it okay. They could have and probably should have changed it if they were going to give it the healer feet. But I get why they didn't. I just don't like it from a lore standpoint. It really limits your choices as far as hermits go. But overall, overall, it's not bad but it too is going to get a B. <clears throat> now, the merchant background, oof. It gets constitution, intelligence, and charisma. Intelligence, charisma makes sense. Intelligence, or constitution, uh, they're just throwing it up there at this point just to, just to have it there, just so it has some, some value, I guess, or some... Um, I don't know. They're just throwing it up there now in random spots. It's got the lucky feet, which is cool. I feel like a merchant should get the skilled feet. They're a merchant. They're, this is what they do, right? They're, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, and then their skill proficiencies make sense. Animal handling. Um, some merchants sell animals. They need to handle animals. Cool, whatever. Persuasion. All merchants have to be persuasive. You know, uh, all merchants are persuasive, persuasive, but not all persuasive people are merchants and, and whatnot. The problem is, animal handling really doesn't go with any of the possible choices for an ability score improvement. So it's like, cool, here's a skill proficiency, but we're not going to help you with it on top of a, a feat that doesn't really make sense with this background. I don't know. O overall, I don't see it. I don't see it happening. I don't see it being used too often. Um... Yeah, even Crafter would have made better sense for Merchant than Lucky. Especially with the, the discount and whatnot. But, I, I don't know. It's it's getting a D from me. Mostly because it it doesn't have any like real relevance in or out of combat. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong and it sees a lot of use. But I, I don't think it will. <clears throat> Next game is the Noble. Noble gets Strength, Intelligence, and Charisma. All of this makes sense, right? Nobles are usually strong. Most most paladins and are end up having the noble background, right? It, it makes sense, um, and they have to be smart, and they're usually charismatic because 
the nobles, um, they get the skilled fee. <laughs> yeah, I guess this makes sense. As a noble, your upbringing is going to be a lot of schooling. You're going to, to learn how to do certain things or use certain tools. So the skilled feat is just an amazing feat to have at the first level. As I've already said with Charlatan, it's an amazing feat. Um, so there's not a whole lot more I can say about that. Other than, you know, first level, three more skill proficiencies. Yes, please. Right? And then... The skill proficiency that it gives is history and persuasion, which is an intelligence check and a charisma check, which they get. So it overall, it meshes really well together. Uh, the feet works with it. Everything works with it. And I see it getting more use than it used to, which is frustrating because as far as I'm concerned, from a lore standpoint, the noble background is one of the most boring backgrounds. But it is a fantastic background considering everything we're considering. So it gets an A. Next is going to be the Sage background. I know a lot of my players used to love the Sage background. I don't know how they're going to feel about this, but let's jump into it. They get Constitution, Intelligence, and Wisdom. So again, I don't understand why they're just randomly throwing Constitution in. It... It makes sense for certain uh, things. For some of these, it makes sense. But, like, for a sage, it doesn't. It just doesn't. But, I'm done harping on that. Gets the, the feat it gets is the Magic Initiate for Wizards. You had to see it at least once, right? That's wonderful. It makes sense, right? Sages are usually well-learned. They tend to have some form of magic... And the easiest magic you can get while only being well-learned is wizard magic because they get their magic from reading books, right? Boring, I know, but that's, that's how they do it. So it makes sense. It's wonderful. I love it. And then it's two choices. This is going to be a cop-out just like the, uh, the criminal one. It's Arcana and History, both intelligence checks. <sighs> While they make sense for the sage, the sage is, once again, it's well-learned, so history and arcana, it makes sense from a lore standpoint. It meshes well with the ability score choices. It's just, it feels like a cop-out, but it works. Unfortunately, they are also some of the least used skill proficiencies. <clears throat> they are used, don't get me wrong, especially arcana, but they're not used as much as, say, persuasion or perception, insight, investigation, uh, stealth, sight of hand, you know. So history is almost never used unless you're in like a ruin or your quest is to go slay an ancient evil, right? So it's very situational. So because of the choices of skill proficiencies being lame at best um, mostly unused at worst it's getting a B from me it's fantastic it's a fantastic background I recommend it for for anyone who wants to dip their toes into wizard magic without making a wizard absolutely but just know it's going to give you two skill proficiencies that um, you're not really ever going to use so uh, take take what you will from that. Next is going to be Sailor. Now, the Sailor used to be an unused background for the most part. I say for the most part because obviously there have been some big names that, that have used this background. Uh, <clears throat> but most campaigns, not all, but most campaigns are landlocked. You're not doing any real sailing. You're Occasionally you'll get on a boat to cross a river, but you're not the one rowing it. Or, or it is a rowboat and you're rowing it, at which point you don't need a sailor for that, right? <clears throat> and I guess they didn't like that, so they changed it a fair amount. Now, I believe it still has, you know, the, the tool proficiency is still like uh, sailing tools, you know, compass and whatnot. Um, I didn't write that down and, and 
there's a lot, so obviously I can't remember everything. I apologize. But for the most part, it is still the same. But they changed a couple things, just enough things to make it playable and not a terrible choice for landlocked campaigns. But... Mm, so they get the strength, dexterity, and wisdom ability score choices. Makes sense. You have to be strong, dexterous uh, on a boat in the ocean. And you have to be wise enough to make sure you're tying everything down right, you know, not steering directly into a whirlpool, what have you. Makes sense. Their feet's tavern brawler. Now, this is another thing that makes sense for, for a sailor, but this is also something that makes sense for, I don't know, a criminal, maybe even a charlatan. Uh, basically, you get damage rerolls for unarmed strikes. You get improvised weapon proficiency. Um, two other things that I can't remember because they're not going to be used too often. <clears throat> but overall, it's a good feat to have. Not when I see a sailor using, mostly because for the most part, if somebody's going to play a sailor, they're usually going to be like a rogue. Um... You're not going to see a whole lot of, like, monk or barbarian sailors. They're there. But, I don't know. It's it's not a terrible feat, but it's not, like, one of the better feats. And then their skill, skill proficiencies are acrobatics and perception. Both work with the ability score choices. You know, acrobatics is a strength check. You're not going to see a whole lot of acrobatics checks. And then perception is a wisdom check. You'll see a lot of perception checks. A lot of perception checks. But with the subpar tavern brawler feat, um, I don't see this getting a whole lot of use. The only good thing it really has going for it is the perception skill proficiency. So it's going to go ahead and get a D from me. Next is the scribe. <clears throat> the scribe is more than I thought it was going to be. Uh, their ability score choices are dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom, and they get the skilled feat. Obviously, it's got the skilled feat that immediately pumps it up in the ranking a little bit. Um, and the skilled feat kind of makes sense because while they're not quite sages yet, they're still well learned and in the process of continuing to learn. <clears throat> their their skill proficiencies are investigation, perception. Uh, both of which are wisdom, so that's that is the third, and if I remember correctly, final yeah the third and final background that both skill proficiencies are on the same uh, ability score out of a lot. So once again, a bit of a cop out. Uh, the perception makes sense, investigation I guess kind of makes sense, but not really. I don't know. It still feels like a cop out. Um, and unfortunately, I can't think of, well, that's not entirely true. I guess there's a couple of classes that would willingly take the scribe background because it would make sense for their class. So, an investigation and perception are both heavily used skill proficiencies. And on top of that, that skilled feat giving you more skill proficiencies, the scribe is going to get an A for me. It's good. It's probably one of the better ones on here, if I'm being perfectly honest with myself here. I don't personally like it, but I can't deny how good it is. Next is a soldier. They get strength, dexterity, constitution. Finally, a class or a background that makes sense with constitution other than farmer, right? Their feet is savage attacker. That's good. It's okay. It's, I mean, yeah, it is what it is, okay? And then their, their skill proficiencies are athletics and intimidation. Athletics doesn't get used a whole lot. It gets used more than acrobatics, but it doesn't get used a whole lot. And that's a strength check, and that's cool. So you really utilize that strength. Intimidation, as much as it pains me to say this, is still a charisma check. It shouldn't be. Uh, I'm, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm far more likely to be intimidated by the big muscle head, you know, shouting at me from across the room 
than the overly charismatic person that's really good with their words, right? But, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just me. I will die on the hill that intimidation belongs as a strength check, in my opinion, but I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. <laughs> Sometimes I make the rules, actually, that's not fair. <clears throat> it is an okay background. Um, it's going to get a C from me, because the Savage Attacker isn't a bad feat, and it offers good ability score choices for the classes that would most likely take the Soldier background. But Intimidation is a well-used skill proficiency, but if you're not going to bonus it, if you're not going to give a choice to increase that, that ability score, there's no point in really having it on there. So it makes it less useful, right? The final one, we finally reached the bottom. This was a huge pain to write, by the way. The Wayfarer. They get Dexterity, Wisdom, and Charisma. I don't know. I feel like the Wayfarer didn't even need to be made. It could have just been the guide. But I guess... Whatever. Right? They get the lucky feet, which cool. Cool. That's a good feat to have. It's... I don't know. And then the skill proficiencies are insight and stealth. Once again, I don't understand why a Wayfarer, who's just a glorified guide, has the stealth back... Or the stealth proficiency, but... Not gonna, you know, look a gift horse in the mouth. It's not gonna happen. Right? These are both heavily used proficiencies. And... Insight gets bonus from the Wisdom, which is an ability score choice, and Stealth gets boosted from Dexterity. So it meshes well as a whole. It's a good background that, in my mind, from a lore standpoint, which is what the background should focus on, doesn't make sense. However, we're not talking about lore when it comes to ranking these. So it is going to get a B for me, and that's because... It could have and should have had a different feat. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't think of what, but it should have had a different feat. Lucky doesn't really make sense for it, but it's my opinion. Um, personally, I would have given it the, the tough feat, considering you have to be tough to guide morons through places, but hey, whatever. Um, those are my rankings for the backgrounds that are in the 2024 handbook. If you disagree with me, which I'm sure a lot of you will, and that's okay, let's have a conversation. I could easily change my mind, or maybe I could change your mind. Um, nothing's ever set in stone. So like, share, comment, what have you. Don't forget to subscribe if, if you like this, if you want to see more, because there's a lot of backgrounds for me to go over, and that's coming up real soon here. But as always, thanks for watching.